can start drinking water, but you don't want to overdo it. Okay, so I would say just that, that first day, probably like no more than probably 60, 80 ounces, depending how much you weigh. Hey, what's up fasters? Dr. Legrand here, here for another fasting video. And today I'm going to talk about how to break a dry fast. A lot of you guys asked this question when I started doing the videos of how to break a long-term fast. So I'm gonna talk about how to break a long-term dry fast and also how to break a short-term dry fast. So the longest I've actually done a dry fast is four days. So I'm not here to claim that I'm an expert on when it comes to doing a prolonged dry fast, but four days is pretty long. But this is more a perspective when I actually deal with my patients that do dry fasting, both also water fasting from a more of a doctor's perspective and looking at that aspect. So let's first dive into how to break a short-term dry fast. And at the end, towards the end of the video, I'll talk about how to break a prolonged dry fast. So you wanna make sure to stay until the end of the video. All right, so when you wanna break, break a dry fast, so we're talking about like a short dry fast. So it's like a you know 20 to 24 hour dry fast. And this is very safe to do. A lot of religions do this. They've done it for years. Of course, unless you have some medical condition that might be hindering you from doing a 24 hour dry fast. Definitely want to check with, check with your physician with doing any kind of dry fasting or any type of water fasting in general. So basically the first thing that you want to make sure when you are breaking a dry fast, the first thing that you're gonna really start craving is of course water. Now, when it comes to drinking water, you want to start taking it slowly. You don't wanna shock the system. So just like if you were breaking a water fast, the same thing applies when you want to introduce food, you introduce it slowly. I've talked about this before in how to break a fast with water, like doing a water fast. So how you breaking a dry fast is, I always say drink about start with four ounces of water for the first hour. So definitely drinking just that four ounces of water just to get your mouth, you know, wet again because it's been really dry. And then in the next hour you drink another four ounces of water. So just taking it very slow to introduce water back in. Now the thing, another thing, the next step too, what I would say is after that, you probably should start incorporating some electrolytes, especially magnesium. Magnesium is one of the biggest things that we get depleted during a fasting. So doing about 300 milligrams of magnesium after that. The next thing you want to start incorporating, if you, if, again, this is for a short-term fast, is step number three is you want to introduce first liquids, so healthy liquids. So if you want to incorporate you know, healthy lifestyles in your eating habits, you definitely want to start incorporating something like vegetable juice into the next step. So that would be step three is by the time about third hour, you're doing veggie juicing, okay? Then by, you know, about step four, by the time you're reached about four to five hours, then you could start introducing some liquid proteins. So like bone broth, uh, you know, some soups that have vegetables and some other just uh, bone broth as well in it, that's fine. And then you could start incorporating by the time you hit about six to eight hours, that's when you can start introducing some more solids back into the system. The reason why you want to do this and start incorporating more this way, because it, for example, if you just go and just eat something real quick, especially something that has high in sodium, your body is going to want to retain a lot of that sodium as well as a lot of water. And so you'll find that you'll gain quite a bit of weight when you do that. You don't wanna put your body in, a, in, in that shock of when you're introducing water or sodium, you wanna do it slowly. And then, so this is the best way to do it from a short-term fast perspective. Now, the other thing, if you do deal with some uh, digestive issues, it's always good to incorporate things such as like bitter herbs before you introduce the solid foods. So let's dive into the prolonged fast. So how to do a prolonged fast. So the first day, what you're going to focus on is just water water only, uh, especially if you, this is um, what I'm talking about, a prolonged dry fast, it's like three plus days of doing dry fasting. Now, again, if you are somebody that is, has health concerns, issues, you have to check with a physician. You can't just dive into this. This is something you need to get your body adapted to before you actually dive into something this extensive. So for doing a breaking a prolonged fast, again, you just, the very first day, step one, the first day is gonna be focused on water. But again, 
introducing that water very slowly. So you're gonna start with four ounces of water, that very first cup. And then after that, you're going to, an hour later, do another four ounces. By the time you hit about, you know, three to four hours in, you can start drinking water, but you don't wanna overdo it, okay? So I would say just that, that first day, probably like no more than probably 60, 80 ounces, depending how much you weigh again, but that's gonna be the first day of the focus, okay? The second day, and also within that first day, again, take magnesium. The research has shown when people do fasting, the, the thing that's most depleted is your magnesium. So taking like 300 to 600 milligrams on that first day, introducing that back in. Don't do any sodium at that point because again, your body is going to absorb a lot of sodium when you first introduce, you must slowly do it. So the next step, so day two, step two for a prolonged fast is to do liquid vegetables. Now, when I say liquid vegetables or juices, try to keep it 20% fruits, 80% vegetables. You don't want to introduce too many, uh, you know, fructose into the system just quite yet. So I would suggest try to keep it more vegetable based. And that's gonna have lots of minerals that your body has been depleted from doing a dry fast. So definitely incorporating it that for the second day. Now, again, this has to do with if you want to incorporate good food association and trying to change how you're eating, trying to change your eating habits, you need to start doing it in the steps so you incorporate, not just jumping in, eating whatever you want when you break a dry fast. That's the wrong way of doing it. So the third day or the step three, third day, then you can start incorporating things such as bone broth, soups with vegetables and healthy fats, okay? You can start incorporating those things to make sure you're doing it in a more slowly manner because you don't wanna shock the system, okay? Then step four, this is gonna be the fourth day. This is when you can start introducing solid foods. But before you do that, I would suggest doing some bitter herbs, some liquid bitter herbs. And so what I mean by that is, again, it's going to be things such as, like I've talked about before, dandelion root, uh, golden seal, milk thistle, chamomile, those three, you know, those four are very bitter. So when you take it in a more liquid form, it does stimulate digestive enzymes all the way up to our saliva where we carry digestive enzymes throughout our digestive system in our stomach, our digestive tract, as well as stimulate our gallbladder and liver, which also helps with digestion. Now you gotta remember your body has not been eating or drinking any kind of water or liquids for a long time, for three plus days, however long you've done your dry fast. So you got to give it some supportive stuff. This is what I see all the time with patients who come in, have decided to do you know, a very extensive dry fast. I've even seen some people have done nine, dry nine days of dry fast and their digestive system is all messed up because they broke the fast improperly. And a lot of times we do have to give them certain things to help support them to get things back on track. And these are just things that I do recommend for a lot of my patients, a lot of people to be able to introduce at this type of steps. Now, day five, you know, you've already introduced solids. Now, I forgot to mention, you know, back when you're first starting to do veggie juicing, so you could start doing some minor physical activity. So that's when you're doing the, you know, the liquid vegetables, do some minor activity. You don't want to do overdo it. Remember, you just came off of something very extensive on the body, very harsh on the body. So you want to make sure you're doing it slow. By the time you're doing the liquid proteins, uh, that's, you know, step three, then it's fine to do a little bit more, you know, exercise. I highly encourage that. When you're doing the short-term fast, I always say when you're introducing water, then go and do exercise. Cause it's only been 24 hours and it's really good because that is a great time to do some exercise to increase your growth hormones as well as testosterone for men, things like that. They can help rebuild the muscle and uh, get the really great benefits from that. Okay, so step five, we've already introduced solids. The other thing that I do encourage is doing digestive enzymes because your body, the, the pancreas enzymes are not used to eating food. It's been, you know, three plus days since you've had food. So doing some digestive enzymes after your meal is always good to incorporate at least for the first, you know, month or so to be able to get your digestive system back on track. Okay, so these are the things I recommend. Again, just to kind of summarize, when it comes to a prolonged fast, step one is gonna be water. Step two is when you're gonna introduce liquid vegetables, so 20% fruits, 80% vegetables. And then step three is when you're introducing, you know, liquid proteins, healthy fats, so things such as soups. 
And then also you're going to introduce some, you know, bitter herbs along with that. Step four is when you can introduce, you know, solids back into your system, but make sure you're doing digestive, um, you know, bitter herbs as well as in step five, also incorporating uh, digestive enzymes. So I hope you guys found this beneficial. And if you have any questions about how to break a dry fast, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We talk about fasting, other health tip videos every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then, of course, if you guys want to know about my dry fast experience, also fasting journey, go ahead and click on this link right here, this video right here. And then if you want to know how to prepare for a dry fast properly, go ahead and click on this video right over here. All right, that's it, you guys. It's Dr. Legrand signing out, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.